Hello, Simon, and hello to everybody who is with us today. Hi, Nina. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Perfect. Me too. Thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> and I'm excited to our ninth Building Radar webcast. Yes, um, same here. June 2020. June, one month later um, from the last one we had, some, some holidays in Germany in between, and actually a lot of happening. So um, yeah. I think we're going to have some exciting numbers to show. Exactly. Cool. Um, so as usual, uh, let's wait until 5.01 so we're not too German about this. Um, and then I start with a little bit of a introduction. Um, why are we talking on the topic um, and where is our information actually coming from? And then we'll dive right into um, what we have planned for today. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I will wait until it turns to 501 on the clock and then I'll hit it off. <laughs> so you put the extra one minute to be not dead, not too German, right? <laughs> That's the idea behind it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fair. For the German one, we can always start on the point, but I think it's fair to just give it a little bit of cultural slack. <laughs> All right, yeah, 501 it is. <laughs> All right, great. So um, let me welcome everybody who joined us today. Uh, my name is Nina and I am in charge of all the sales development topics at Building Radar. Um, on my side is uh, Simon. You can give a bit of an intro of yourself as usual. Yeah, thanks Nina. Hello everybody. My name is Simon. I'm working at Building Radar since um, 2017, mainly in the customer success team. Um, and on all the aggregate data analysis we present um, to you in this webcast format. Um, but also, um, of course, if you're interested in, in the format um, or in the data um, on request. So that being said, of course, you can reach out to us afterwards um, or we can reach out to you in any case um, to send you out the slides and the recording of this week's webcast. And you can also see all the previous web webcasts and, um, and slides that we had in the past. So feel free to, to message us or um, contact us via LinkedIn, email or whatever other way. Um, on that note, since we're on the communication side, there is a little questions um, part on your go to webinar. Um, view on the right side. If you have any questions throughout the presentation regarding our slides or anything else that you think would be good for us to look into, feel free to write it there and we'll pick it up right away and go in more details. So to start off with um, who are we? Why are we actually talking about this topic? Uh, Building Radar is a technology platform that um, collects uh, research and co uh, researches and collects um, construction information and construction project related information um, and publishes them further on the platform. The way this functions is through machine learning algorithms and natural language processing. And uh, what this actually means is basically our algorithms in, uh, read everything that's available online from newspapers to forums to um, also public tenders. Um, and it takes this information and puts them in a more structured project. So for you to imagine what natural language processing is, um, it really goes from an article saying that there is a new uh, construction site or a new distribution center being built. Um, and then this gets put in a structured form where it says what kind of an industry it is, what size of the project it is and similar. Um, exactly. What we actually do in this webinar is we take this information in an aggregated form and we present it to you to look into what kind of um, developments we're seeing on the market uh, especially. Uh, we've been seeing this or we've started with this during Corona times because we've seen an extreme drop in data. So you will see some indicators also that are regarding Corona related uh, activities like lockdowns and similar. Um, but I'll let Simon introduce you to the agenda and take us into the first um, data points. Yes, thank you, Nina. And um, yeah, first point um, today are the building radar indicators. Um, if you listen to our webcast uh, in the previous weeks, um, you will recognize uh, the slides. Um, we slightly changed um, some calculations and some um, indication, but um, the main idea, however, is as Nina explained, to get a feeling, an indication from our single construction leads, so data on um, specific um, construction projects on an aggregate level. So 
I, I will um, dive into this um, later by, um, after uh, introducing the second point, country comparison. What we're doing here is we um, not only compare the, um, the German market or the German speaking market, but um, we collect worldwide data. So we have comparisons for that. And um, so, um, yeah, and also a look into a more broad look into um, Asia and um, Australia, et cetera. But let's start with the first part, uh, building radar indicators. Um, and as I said, if you listened um, to the webcast uh, in the previous weeks, you know this slide. Um, it all started with the, uh, with the lockdown in Italy when Corona has started in, um, in, in Europe. Um, already the week before um, this lockdown, we see from calendar week seven, um, a drop of our um, early stage information of construction projects in Europe until calendar week 12. And with the lowest point in calendar week 15, and an, an increase in the data until today of from the lowest point until today of 93% recovery. So this would be again, this would be the aggregated data on um, early of early stage information on construction projects in Europe, which we of course, also have for the DACH region, which would be um, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And as you see on, on this um, side, these are the total numbers, the development of total numbers um, for these early stage information. Um, what, what are early stage information? Uh, early stage information is, for example, if in a text is written that a um, company plans to extend its office building, or if a um, if a town um, decides to um, to build a new new school, for example, and if this um, information is written in um, in English or German in any source online and um, available, um, we collect this information and present it to our um, customers on our building radar platform on a on a single single level, so a single lead level, and this would be the aggregated data for that. As you can see, we've taken some of these kind of indicators, we call them, um, or benchmark data, based on what we've been noticing throughout the corona times. Um, so you see, we start always with this calendar week seven, which is kind of the point just before the first big lockdown in Europe happened, which is the lockdown in Italy, which was in calendar week eight. And from there, we, um, we always try to look at what kind of happenings are, are um, relevant, what's been going on that seems to have impacted the market. And this is also how we came up to um, this speech from Merkel and, and why we're connecting it to this drop, because this was, uh, if, if you don't remember the speech, this was when um, there was also an announcement that, or, or an expectation that a very high number or percentage of Germans would also be um, affected by coronavirus, which also resulted in um, in quite a lot of panic in drops in general, and we've seen exactly the data behave uh, that way too. So um, please make sure to, um, to uh, the expectation here is not, we don't know everything that's happened and everything that's uh, affecting the market, but this is kind of where we pulled our conclusions or the expectations where the changes um, could be coming from. Exactly. Um, one question which um, arrived to us in the last weeks was, um, could this drop and recovery of um, early stage information um, in the media um, be biased due to um, a different um, media coverage? Um, yes, of course, this could be the case, but our experience and we talked to a lot of customers and um, market, um, market participants um, is that the information we collect with this early stage information do not refer to the to the current ongoing um, ongoing projects, right? So um, we experienced, and and maybe if you're also a participant in the construction market, um, you know that the, the 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 construction sites which are ongoing at the moment they are still ongoing despite of um, Corona, but um, the new plant um, there was a drop in the in the planning of the of the of new buildings and new construct construction sites. Um, it might be that um, some meeting could not happen because of Corona, and um, therefore the decision of a for a new construction site was just delayed. Um, and this would be exactly what 
our um, um, what we think at the moment. So what we've noticed, and potentially you you have noticed it for yourself and for your company too, uh, through talking with our clients, we've seen a lot of budget freezes happening through this time too, which yeah. is very likely to have affected um, the projects that are ongoing. And um, when we're talking further on, also when it comes to industry and sectors, private, public, um, we we'll look into this kind of data and we have a chance always to look into this kind of data, but we've been noticing throughout Corona that um, there seems to have been a lot more trust in, in at least from the public side and not so much a confidence to actually invest in private uh, funded projects. Exactly. I think we and can go also, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But maybe just one technical aspect. Um, we, we mention it every every week, but our algorithm, which looks for um, the um, the, the construction information um, is not limited to the first page, right? Of, for example, a newspaper. Um, it collects every every information um, also on the last page of a newspaper, for example. So, also this on the technical side. Um, Nina, what do we see here? <laughs> exactly. No, just we kidding. Mentioned it. it was a perfect, <laughs> just perfect dive into the next topic. <laughs> Just, uh, just kidding. So what we um, we have a comparison between um, private and um, public early stage information. Um, again, for um, the DACH region, for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And as again experienced already um, last time, so four weeks ago, we saw a, um, a later lowest point for the private sector than for the public sector as well as a faster recovery of the public um, early stage, um, no, the public, the, the early stage information regarding public um, construction sites. And however, both um, are, are, are increasing, both indicators. Good news. There are, there are some um, drops, some little drops, but um, the trend is clear, clearly positive for, for both segments. Looking back to 2019 and to confirm um, a, a corona effect, what we, um, yeah, what we're telling you um, since the very first or the, or the second, at least the second uh, web, webcast is that we had, that we see a corona effect um, around here and we did, did not see any effect um, in, in, despite this eastern effect in uh, 2019. So this is again um, this kind of comparison and these benchmarks um, why we're using Easter also when it comes to the 2020 data is because we haven't seen such an Easter drop which we seem to see from year to year um, but in in, uh, in actually in exchange in, in 2020 we've seen this um, drop um, when when all the corona news came up. Yeah maybe also um, on the technical side and if you are interested in, in um, numbers on 2018 which we are not showing here um, just write me an email i will provide um, my email address uh, on the last slide and please feel free um, to send me any request um, and any question um, you might have right. um, here we are again um, at data for whole europe and we compare between structural um, engineering and civil engineering. So this would be Hoch und Tiefbau in German. And we see more or less um, an equal development of both sectors. However, um, as already in the comparison between, um, um, on the last slide, between private and public sector, we see um, a later lowest point for the structural engineering and therefore a faster or an earlier and an earlier recovery of the civil engineering, which concluded around between calendar week 12 and calendar week 21 in a faster recovery of the civil engineering sector. And as you can see of last week, this, this, um, this change, right? So we see the um, structural engineering sector um, closer to the um, um, pre-crisis level than the civil engineering sector. Would you also quickly explain what we mean by civil and structural? Yeah, so this would be um, everything what is, um, so office buildings, for example, and um, 
and um, residential buildings. Structural engineering would be, for example, street works and railroad works. All right, then I think we also have a comparison to 2019, just like we were looking for private and public, yep. Exactly, um, the comparison is here and <laughs> again, there is no sharp drop and no um, sharp recovery due to any crisis. Again, this is um, 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 explaining for um, that we see um, a corona effect this year. And um, what's, what's, I mean, what's really interesting is that we also see um, different levels of um, development between the two sectors. You might also um, ask yourself, um, is there any indicator, any indicator from building radar um, regarding um, office buildings, for example, or residential units, um, etc. We we had these slides, uh, or we presented these slides um, in in previous webcasts. You can watch them on um, YouTube or on our web website, for example. But again, if you're interested in any kind of um, additional information. And um, please feel, feel free to contact us. Also, in general, just so you know, the topics are actually chosen based on your feedback, based on um, our customers and listeners' feedback. So if you have something that you see would be really interesting or a different way that we could take on some of the slides we're currently presenting, feel free to either write us in questions here or contact us directly. Exactly. Right, so we're good in time. Um, um, and we switch to the, um, yeah, we go um, to the United States or to a comparison between data for Europe and the United States. First of all, you see, if you look on this trend line, we see a recovery for both continents. However, looking into um, the details, we see a slight differences or um, so interesting aspects, for example, that we Again, in, in, or pretty at the beginning, we saw a, a later drop of the US data, almost similar development during Corona or at the start of Corona, and um, a faster recovery of the US data, which in the last four weeks has a negative trend, right? If you, you, know, if you look at the last four weeks, we see a negative trend for the United States and still a positive trend for Europe. However, in total, um, since the lowest point here, uh, here in, in the, for the lowest point here for the United States, we, we still see um, a positive um, development. Yep. Um, I mean, the um, unemployment um, numbers for um, the United States may be um, led already to um, some kind of budget, budget freezes, as you explained um, before, um, but it will be definitely interesting to see how this um, curve for United States um, develop. Definitely. If this is ongoing um, um, decreasing or if we see a recovery. Yep. All right. I think we can move forward to our second part of today's yeah. webinar. And this is going into more country comparisons. Yeah, more country comparisons here and between Germany and Europe. Um, this slide or this um, question, what we answer here, comes again directly from a um, customer who asked us to um, show some kind of comparison between um, Germany and Europe in terms of awarded tenders. And you see the um, the uh, development of um, awarded tenders for Germany is more or less constant over time since calendar week seven. But for Europe, we see um, 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 a slight a negative trend. And just for, for also background information, we are a German company and a lot of our data is actually in Germany, very, um, very detailed when, from a lot of sources. Um, but if you see that you would like some different type of, type of comparison, um, feel free to let us know. Exactly. And um, also in terms of uh, technical questions, what we are able to um, detect, for example, in, in terms of tenders in Europe, we're able to um, detect not only German and English speaking tenders, but also tenders in the national uh, languages. And this is why we, why we show this slide, right? That 
um, looking at Italy, Spain, Portugal, for example, um, are clearly influencing these, this negative trend. All right. I think we have to watch the time a little bit, so we're not keeping anybody too long. Yeah. Just looking on the structural engineering <laughs> segment for water tenders, um, for Germany and Europe, we see um, a different, um, different pictures. Um, there is a constant development for um, both regions, so for Germany and for Europe. I mean, you've seen a slight jump in Europe as well, um, while Germany was going down, but um, but in the end, right now, where we're we seeing in the calendar week 24, we're around the same levels. Yeah, exactly. All right. So another um, company comparison would be for the Dach region, for um, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, and we're um, um, jumping back to the early stage information. So we are not at the tender level any longer. Again, if you watched the webcast before, you 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 know this during the slide. And pretty interesting is the development um, of the indicator for um, the Austrian market, the Austrian construction market, which saw a late decrease compared to the other two countries, um, to um, the the lowest point compared here in this with uh, these, between these three countries, and um, the, the the highest um, yeah recovery. Um, almost to 140% compared to calendar week seven. And these numbers um, yeah, converge um, more or less at the moment to, yeah, to below um, 100%. So to below um, the, the pre-crisis level. Uh, Nina, are there any questions um, from our listeners? In the chat? No, from what I'm looking, um, okay. I was actually looking at the, the chat function, so um, for now we're all good. Okay, perfect. So if you have any questions, um, just let us know. Um, we will continue uh, with our presentation, and here we see um, tender, the tender analysis for the same countries, and what we see is a constant development, um, more or less constant development of all three countries for tenders. Only with Switzerland being slightly above. Exactly. And again, please consider the, um, the character of, of these information. So um, our um, so what we think at the moment is that ongoing projects um, or existing projects um, are still ongoing. And this decrease, this corona effect is affected by e.g. Um, um, budget freezes or um, uncertainty, etc. Yeah. All right. Then we're actually going in quite a lot of detail um, about what yeah, we spoke we about earlier. <laughs> Not much time left. So um, here is um, one example. What we're able to do is we can um, separate between different um, segments like the commercial sector, education sector, and all. Um, like commercial sector, health sector, and infrastructure sector are um, above the pre-crisis level. But as you can see, like also the office and residential, for example, are all around um, the pre-crisis level. This is also interesting to see in the future. Um, this also might be planned, uh, planned in the past, also depending on how things develop further with big companies allowing home office, uh, moving fully to home office, or, or whatever the case will be. Um, these will be very interesting things to to look at further down the line. Exactly the same for for you for Europe for the tenders. And if we compare the numbers, you see um, we see a slight negative trend. All of the categories are below 100 percent. And if you think back on one of the first slides, we show. Um, this represents um, the whole slightly decreasing um, trend for, for tenders in Europe, but just slightly. I remember from our past slides also, if it's of interest, um, during Corona we had this extreme spike with uh, health-related yeah. um, uh, construction sites. And this mm -hmm. was a very, very interesting information. So uh, we can also look up which, which exact week that was, but 
um mm -hmm. yeah generally if this is of interest feel free to um, to let this us know for, um, exactly this was more for the um i remember this was for the early stage information mm -hmm. uh, which in character are different to the tenders yeah and yeah so um last part worldwide comparison or not comparison but a look on uh, the indicators for the worldwide data um, as nina said we are a germany based company our home market is um, the, the german speaking market europe and all information we collect for asia for example and also for um, australia new zealand the whole oceania what you see what you can see here is based on english sources so um yeah, Nina, how would you explain it? It's, um, um, well, sorry, I oh, know. Um, um, we should, if we, if we look at these numbers, of course, we see the corona effect and we see a recovery, but um, please keep in mind that um, for the Asian market, um, for example, um, we, we just have the, the English speaking um, sources. So, I mean, what, what Simon is generally trying to say and why we are so language limited is, um, if you remember at the beginning of the webcast, I mentioned the natural language processing and the way this works is that uh, actually the, the algorithm or the, the machine learning algorithm needs to understand what stands within the language. We are right now focused on German and English, um, which means that we might be missing some information, um, especially and when it comes to outside of Germany and then on top outside of um, of Europe, if it's not um, in English, if the, the early stage information is not published in English. Exactly. This is a very interesting part of the world for me, especially with everything that's going on in the news. Um, so it's really interesting to actually see that um, in... Oh, sorry. Um, um, in... Uh, the Oceania, or however we, uh, one pronounces that, um, mm -hmm. we are actually over the 100% right now. Um, we had this drop as well, and if we're looking at the weeks, and if you remember the original discussion starting with calendar week seven always, you can see that the, the kind of lowest point was at the calendar week 13 and 16, um, and we always had talked in Europe was 12 and 15, so we're seeing a slight, um, slight gap there, a slight difference there. Um, but very, very interesting and nice to see that uh, we're actually picked up over the 100% um, of the pre-crisis level. Yeah. So looking at the time, um, we also see the, the numbers for Africa um, mm -hmm. below the pre-crisis level of calendar week 7. And as always, short comparison would be um, overall we see um, recovery um, in the in the main market in the main indicators for Europe and DACH we are um, at 84 or 85 and 89 percent recovery for these two um, regions and also for the public and the private um, early stage information we saw um, a constant recovery again um, Please feel free to contact me and send send me your, your email, your request, your questions on the data on the on the slides. Um, maybe you want to present the, the slides or, or some additional data in, inside your company, or use it for for a presentation. Um, feel free to do that. Um, um, as Nina always says, as long as the billing radar is uh, um, emblem is shown, right? Um, but we are open to any kind of uh, questions. Absolutely. And of course, um, you can find us on LinkedIn both or uh, contact Simon directly through the email here. Like we mentioned a couple of times through the webinar, uh, by all means, do contact us with the information that's of interest to you. And uh, this webinar is exactly for that person uh, purpose. We want to find out and show you what, uh, what can give you indicators um, of what your next uh, good move is. Um, or generally just have you understand where the market stands. So, um, yeah, for that being said, we appreciate any comments uh, from your side and any contact. Uh, and, of course, hope to see you back on the 16th of July, um, same time, same place. You can use the same link, um, and you'll be seeing Simon and myself once again. Exactly. There's one minute left, maybe, um, Nina, one last question to our um, new trials. 
so the um, trade routes which we offered due to uh, Corona? Yeah, of course. Um, we've been running a little bit more of a flexible model um, during the month of June. So what this means is um, there are some different pricing options in case if you, if you were in touch with us in the past. So um, if you're interested in a single lead, so not this aggregated data we're showing in this um, webinar, but more specific usage of uh, finding out new projects that you might want to pitch and you might want to um, win for your company, um, then especially get in touch with us. You can also write me directly um, and I will get you in touch with our with one of our representatives to talk uh, further about the opportunities. We do um, offer an opportunity to look into the platform as well to see how the, the data is structured. So um, yeah, I'm, I'd be happy to speak to any of you who has an interest. Perfect. All right, right on the dot with time. Exactly. Um, just in time we... Um, wish you a, a good week and um, hope to see you at at the latest in four weeks and of course we would appreciate it if you um yeah write us an request thank you very Absolutely. much thanks a lot and have a great rest of the week bye everybody bye